Alright, well, welcome to episode 2, part 2 of Cole and the Aspie. And today, I actually organized my thoughts beforehand already. Uh, before I get into the episode proper, I want to mention that I have taken off the restrictions for comments. I used to have it set up where I have to approve all the comments, but I wasn't quite sure on how to actually run it. I've figured out since how to, but I figured, you know what, leave it alone for right now. And I'm sure I don't have to say this, but I'm going to anyways. Let's not abuse the ability to say whatever we want in the comments. The reason why I had them on approval is because on some other websites, uh, you know, I'm going to name it, 4chan, the toy section on 4chan. I've actually been personally, and I know personally is probably the wrong word to use, but I've been insulted and I've made a comment and, oh, that guy's gone full Asperger, that guy's an Austin, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it becomes insults. It's like, yeah, gee, thanks. So, yeah. <clears throat> um, this episode is basically about how to deal with a child, close family member, loved one, boyfriend, girlfriend, etc. Having a flip out session. And don't worry, I will get to what I do to avoid and stop myself from having a flip out session. So, I'm going to get to get to myself. So, <clears throat> basically, you know, like I said in the earlier one, you know... Flip-out sessions can have, happen for a whole myriad of reasons. The one I'm going to start with is getting injured. Um, in my off time, my hobbies is I do custom action figures. And this is one right here. This is Cyberfire Bumblebee. All the red used to be yellow, so it's pretty much a straight repaint. And I did all the silver trim and logo bits, you know. I like it. Well, growing up, I used to work with Legos. I loved Legos, and sometimes, you know, a Lego setup wouldn't go together properly, so I'd get frustrated and I'd get all pissed off. My mom or dad would come around and, you know, what the hell's wrong? Well, what are you all yelling about? I'm like, this thing won't do this, and this thing won't do that. Well, <clears throat> later on, I moved on to model kits, and I started using uh, scalpels and dremels that I use with these guys, and I get cut up regularly. I got one right there recently. It's a tiny one. Well... I started having frustrations with that too, and well, one day, I'm working on a model, and I slipped, my scalpel slipped, and split the side of my thumb clean open, and it just gushed, okay? I had a good-sized puddle of blood on my bed. I shrieked out, <laughs> and nobody came to figure out what the hell was going on. I shrieked bloody murder, and here I am, you know, 9, 10 years old, Scared to death because, you know, what the hell, I'm used to, you know, I scream like that. Somebody comes to check, see what's going on. So I grab a shirt and I wrap it up and I go out to the front of the house. And I'm like, I see my parents there. Like, why wasn't anybody worried about me screaming out painfully? Oh, we got used to it. Well, gee, that's great. You got used to it. And I'm bleeding to death here. Oh, crap. So he had to rush me to the hospital. I think I ended up with about five or six stitches. It healed up pretty nicely. That's, yeah. So, yeah. Don't get used to it. Just like when you see parents and their baby in public. Baby sitting there, and they're ignoring the kid. No. Okay, figure out what's wrong with the baby. Figure out what's wrong with your kid. So, yeah. And you know what? When it's an adult doing it, you know, one of my Facebook friends... Her husband got injured recently, and he started cussing and swearing and throwing a fit. She ignored him. She let him peer it out. She admitted that he was scaring her, and that he was scaring the crap out of their dog. Or was it a cat? I think it was a dog. But you know what? That was the right thing to do, because if you would have ran over, Honey, shut up! Calm down! It would have been like, well, F you too. You know, I'm hurt here. Now... The good reaction would have been, anything I can do to help? You know, are you okay? I cut my damn thumb out. Ah, 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 ah. But you're okay, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm just pissed off. Yeah. Learn to interpret what we're saying, because sometimes we might say something and sound horribly offensive and dickish. And if you don't like that word, I apologize. Let me know. I will avoid using it. Um, but yeah, you know... The way, the way I see it is, other people are allowed to get frustrated and upset, and I see it, but I'm not allowed to say anything. And if I do say anything, I'm an even bigger rate hole. Example from work. Uh, drivers come into the yard, and we got this tiny, tiny 
yard for the trucks. And a driver will come, and I'm like, hey, next time, remember to park on the street coming on foot first. Oh, well, I, I didn't know. I didn't know it was my first time. I was like, well, what's the difference between him doing that and me cutting my thumb and throwing a fit? He's getting overly defensive. Well, there's no need to get defensive. So, hey, dude, don't worry about it. Just just remember next time. Don't worry about it. It's okay. Cool. You know, here's what you got to do, man. Don't worry about it, you know? But I get upset. I throw down a clipboard because I'm frustrated. You're pissed off. You're angry. Where was I? Um, if the person in question having a fit isn't a danger to themselves or others, just let it right out. If your 10-year-old kid's throwing a fit, just let it right out. Now, if they're in public, yeah, that's, that's a bit different. You gotta do something. You can't just let them stand there. You know, if, again, no, actually, you know, even if he is in public, because, you know, I've seen many times when parents in public will let their, you know, five-year-old, ten-year-old kid throw a fucking fit and they'll just stand there. Did I just drop the F-bomb? I think I did. I apologize. And they'll just stand there. Okay, are you done? Are you done? Okay, you're done. Don't be embarrassed. You know, because it's not embarrassing you. I'm not the one flipping out. I'm not the one making an A an, 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 an A of myself. <sighs> don't ignore it, but don't rush to stop. So, you know, I've seen actually kid flip out. Hey, what's wrong? What's wrong? You know, you don't want to tell me? Okay, fine. Just stand here. And I've actually applauded parents. I've actually walked over like, you know what? You're doing a good job. You know, if they're hurt, you figure it out. You tr you tried. What do you want? What do you want them to do? Spank the kid in public? No, because then they're going to get arrested. That's a whole other subject for another day. Wow, I made a list. Even though I, I made a list, I'm not even following my list. Let's see here. Don't demand a correction in behavior. This actually really applies to um, teenagers and adults. Okay, I throw I, I get upset. I get frustrated. Hey, calm down. Relax. Well, f you too. When you get upset and frustrated, you're allowed to get to show that you're upset and frustrated, but I can't. You know, you're you're end up kind of you're throwing up a road flare. You know, if you're not, you know, make sure that they don't need help. That's really it. You know, when they get frustrated. You know. And I was gonna adjust later on, but I'm gonna adjust it right now. You know, it's the escalation of the incident. Let's see here. Let me actually build up to it. Um, okay. Not angry, just frustrated. You know, don't demand correction because it's going to seem like, it's going to seem like a command. It's going to seem like a demand. And that kind of bounces back to the one rule for me, one rule for you. You're allowed to do something and I'm doing my version of it and I'm being corrected. I'm being yelled at. It's okay, man. It's okay. It's cool. Everything's going to be all right. Don't use words like relax, don't use words like calm down, don't use words like stop it. Because even though you might say in the most beautiful, melodical tone, relax, it still might come across as a demand. Now, relax, that might work. It, it depends on, on the person in question. If my dad or mom were to say that to me, I probably would calm down. But that still depends on who's telling you to calm down, who's telling you to relax. You know, if my fiancé would say, relax, honey, it's all right probably calm down and relax. If my work, my boss at work were to say, it's calm down, relax, that might work. It'd probably upset me, but not as much as, relax, calm down. They try doing that, not, not the full phone. Let's see here. Clipboard at work with my new manager. Um, there was one time that things were calm. I was perfectly content. I tossed down the clipboard. Why are you upset? I'm not upset. Yeah, you are. You threw down the clipboard. Was it me throwing it down? I'm not upset. Yeah, you are. I'm not upset, damn it. You ever seen the movie Anger Management with Adam Sandler? Very beginning of the movie, he's sitting in a plane waiting for it to take off, and he makes a comment about he doesn't like something. And the stewardess automatically assumed, oh, this, this passenger's angry. No, I'm not. This passenger's angry. No, I'm not. This passenger's angry. No, I'm not. This passenger's angry. No, I'm not! And they tease the guy. What the? <sighs> yeah.
See, basically what's going on is a fight or flight response, okay? Child gets frustrated or upset. They're fighting back events, whatever upset them. Then you step in and you order them to calm down. The same thing with adults. And now it's, well, do I run away or do I stand my ground and fight? Well, I really can't run away at work now, can I? And you know what? I'm not sure. Sure as heck, I'm not going to stand there and let you berate me for something I didn't do wrong. <clears throat> well, children, don't punish misbehavior, okay? The throwing the fit, that counts as misbehavior, okay? But when they're calm, you got to tell them, you can't act like that. Okay? You, you, you can't do that, you know. It's not the way people behave. Unfortunately, there has to be a certain amount of conformity from us, from myself. Now, little Johnny tells a gross story at work, and I think I skipped it. Where did that go? Oh, here it is. Okay. Um, let me bounce back a second here, okay? With the um, getting frustrated and throwing a physical temper tantrum, essentially, Physical affection can help a lot, okay? You walk over, you're the mom, you're the dad, you're the husband, you're the wife, and the person you care about is getting pissed off. Put your hand on their shoulder. Hey, it's going to be okay. It's all right, man. It's all right, girl, whatever, okay? That helps a lot. It's been two years since my fiancé left me, and the main thing I miss the most is her holding me. Give a good hug once in a while. I'd love to get a hug from a from, from an attractive woman, but I'm not going to go out and ask some strange woman to do I, I already come across as crazy enough as it is, don't I? Oh, by the way, Cyberfire Bumblebee in robot mode. It's the car I had earlier. He looks evil, and I love it. These weapons I made for him. So... <clears throat> Um, I already said correct behavior, don't punish behavior. Perfect example is little Johnny is sitting at the dinner table and he tells a gross story. Hey, when I was at school today, I drank some milk and I shut it out my nose. It was awesome. Okay, great. You're going to tell a booger story when we're sitting here eating uh, broccoli or spinach. Oh, that's lovely. Okay, well, most parents' reaction would be, Dude, damn it, Johnny! That's gross! Don't tell that kind of story at the dinner table! Fight or flight kicks in. I guarantee you it will have happened with me. It's probably happened with you. And uh, what you should do is, Hey, hey, that story might be funny to you, little Johnny, but we're kind of eating dinner here, okay? Save those for later. You've made a compromise. In this case... You're the parent in the end. Yes, you are the parent in the end. Okay? And what you say has to go, but you know what? Be diplomatic about it. Okay? If little Johnny wants to tell his gross, disgusting stories, after dinner. You know, not when eating chocolate chip mint ice cream, because that's green also. But yeah, because there needs to be an out. We, we need to, ex I need to express myself. <clears throat> so, yeah. With adult correcting behavior, this actually happened with the same manager. I get called up at one in the morning. We need you to come into work. Okay, fine. So that was the uh, post lieutenant not working directly on post calls. and tells me I need to come into work. So then I get the on-site manager calling me up, and I'm like, Yeah, yeah, I know. I gotta go. I was actually getting her getting ready to drive. I hang up. She calls me back. She wanted to ask me, I was going to be there at 2 o'clock. She wanted to ask me if I want her to get there at 4 o'clock to relieve me. So you want me to be there for two hours and then go home. Yeah, that's great and all, but I got a half hour drive to work. I'm not going to go to work for two hours and go home. I want to make the money. So I go, no, 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 I, I got to go. I'll be fine. She comes in the next morning. We need to talk. You shouldn't have hung up on me. That was disrespectful. That was this, that was that. I was trying to get to work. I meant no disrespect. And she took me defending myself as me talking back, I guess. I'm going to defend myself. You know, I didn't do anything wrong. I got to get to work. And she got even more upset. She got even more upset. And then back and forth, back and forth. I'm done talking to you. Well, maybe I'm not done talking to you. She immediately picks up her phone. She 
calls up to the another manager on site. Oh, you gotta come out here. He's out of control. Woman, you don't know me out of control. I could tell I'm not gonna tell her stories, but I can tell you guys stories of me really flipping my ass. And she calls out the other manager and it just accelerates and I'm trying to explain myself and she doesn't want to hear it. She has automatically decided that Colin's being a brain jackass just for the sake of being a brain jackass. You're dis you're disrespecting me because I'm your manager. You don't know disrespect. I will show I didn't say this. I did not say that. I will show you disrespect. Because I said this before, disrespect requires one of two things. Intent or lack of intent to respect. Okay. I know it's not as black as white black and white as that, but it's pretty darn close. And, you know, I got all frustrated. I controlled myself a bit better than I had in other cases, but still, you know, and then later on I talked to the other manager on site and explained what happened, like you hung up on her. Yeah. And she acted like that. Yeah. What? What? They were as confused as I was. I you, you swear, I'm the sensitive one here, and yet she's getting horribly pissed off because I roll my eyes at her and hang up on her when I'm in a rush. I'm the crazy one. <laughs> if she had just come in, hey, Colin, I need to talk to you. I didn't appreciate you hanging up on me last night. I was in a rush. You know, I understand that. But next time I call you on the phone, wait for me to tell you to hang up, all right? I'd appreciate. All right. Oh, my God! You got the same exact... You, you got the same reaction you wanted. You got me agreeing to do what you want me to do. Why? Because you were nice about it. You were calm about it. You didn't talk to me like I was an a-hole. Because I wasn't. Side bit. George Carlin tells this beautiful joke about somebody's level of a-holery depends on how close or far away they are from you. If somebody's way over there, wow, that guy's a real a-hole. But if somebody's right next to you, geez, that guy's a real a-hole. Okay. Um, there's two kinds of a-holes in this world. There's the, that guy's a real a-hole, or, <laughs> that guy's such an a-hole. <laughs> Sometimes, at least in my case, I like to think I fall right in between there, you know. Sometimes I'm a real a-hole, but you gotta think about why I'm being a real a-hole, as opposed to I'm a a-hole ha-ha. Right there in the middle, and if you realize why I'm being a real a-hole, you realize he's an a-hole ha-ha. I think that makes sense. It's, it's, I, and being a brain jackass without the intention of being a brain jackass. I hope that makes sense. I think I just confused myself. Let's see here. So I've talked about, you know, get injured. Don't get aggressive and tell them to calm down. Help them. Misbehavior. Correct it. Don't punish it. Safety. Feeling safe. Wherever you are, it's important to feel safe. Just like anybody who's normal, it's important to feel safe. It's that much more important for an Aspie to feel safe, for me to feel safe. <laughs> Anytime I work a job, <clears throat> damn, I hope those don't go on too long sometimes. Anytime I work a job, I go through about a four to five month acclimation period. And I have told managers straight up before, hey, you know, they usually expect you to acclimate and start doing a really good job within the first month or two. I'm sorry, I'm not going to be able to do that. It's going to take me several months to get acclimated and really get into the groove. And all the managers I've had, they look at me, even ones that hate my guts, and I have, oh, my, I'm going to say his name, Mr. Bleepin' Vasquez. Ugh. I could rant for probably an hour on that son of a gun, but I won't right now. But all my managers have realized, they see me starting to do my job, and they see that I kind of, not quite perfect, but I'm making the effort. And after about four or five months, 
I'm zooming. I'm boom, 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 boom. I'm busting my ass, you know. I'm the best guard at whatever post I'm at. I was like, wow, this guy's actually really damn good. It took him a while to get into the groove, but, but he knows what he's doing. It's because I had to acclimate. I had to feel safe where I was. And if I don't feel safe, oh, it'll fall all right, part, but it'll fall all right back apart again. Living place <clears throat> is um, important also. Where I'm living right now, I've lived at this place for two years. I get along with my roommates, and with the exception of the house I grew up in, it's the longest I've ever lived someplace, and I feel comfortable, I feel safe. I sleep unbelievably well. For the first year or so, I didn't sleep very well. And I'm sure the meds I'm on right now really helps me sleeping, but that's another story for another time. Let's see here. Routine is important. Routine equals safety. The same stuff over and over and over again. And what might be routine for one person with Aspies, with Asperger's, might be completely different for another person with Asperger's. I actually had a manager, and I mentioned him, yeah, I'm, I'm, I have Asperger's syndrome. He's like, you don't seem like somebody with Asperger's syndrome. Well, gee, thanks. You know, maybe you don't know what Asperger's syndrome really is then. I think he was probably confusing it with autism. But, um, to me... I'll admit it, I sleep with a teddy bear. It's the same one I've had for 15 years, maybe. I got it when I was like 10. So actually, no, almost 20 years, yeah. And I've had to actually repair it several times. If I don't have that teddy bear, I ain't sleeping that night. Screw that noise, okay? And that's a small safety thing. And if some, if I were to come home and it was to be gone, it might be a, flick of, it might be a freaking meltdown for me. Okay, it's, it's a small thing, but it's important. I'm sure your children have that. I'm sure spouses have that. Let's see what's next. Um, okay, this is going to be my bit of a wrap-up now, isn't it? Before I do the wrap-up, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier. I want to mention it again. When you confront somebody, and I've actually kind of touched on it a little bit, but now I'm going to directly explain it. When a normal person confronts somebody with Asperger's and they immediately start off aggressive, you know, we need to talk. Well, I'm going to get defensive and then you're going to take that as me talking back and you're going to get even more aggressive. I mean, where it escalates. It's fuel to the fire. Somebody on the Facebook page that I'm a member of, uh, she actually mentioned, you know, yeah, sometimes my son will get really aggressive and, you know, it just escalates. He feeds off of me. Well, you're feeding off of him, too, to a point. Mm. And don't escalate, okay? Johnny, this behavior isn't okay. Well, you don't understand me. You don't understand blah, 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 blah. Dude, it's okay. You know, we need to address this. See, his flight or flight response is kicking in. He's getting aggressive, but you're staying here, and he's going to... There's no fuel to the fire. The fire's going to be there. But if you don't feed into the fire, it won't... You know, just... And he's going to calm down. And afterwards, yeah, we're all going to feel like crap after we've had a fit. Okay, I feel like crap after I've had a fit. Because I accept that, you know what, I shouldn't behave like that. But when I get in that moment, I kind of can't help it. There's only so much I can do. Okay, that that was awkward. My max clip size got exceeded. I hope this isn't going to turn out to very, be a very long uh, vlog. I actually made the notes to try to make it a short one. But I'm polishing up right now. You got to see my desk, yay! Um, I have lost my train of thought! Okay preventing outbursts okay this may not be a nice comparison but i'm going to compare it having asperger's is kind of like being somebody who has potential for seizures okay if you ever watch the old pokemon cartoons there was an episode that they had to ban from america because it caused seizures in japan the flashing lights and all that um okay it's 
very back me either right now, but I have a cool little strobe light thing. If I had a girlfriend who had uh, potential for seizures, I'm not gonna turn on that strobe light while she's in the room and watch her seizure. No, don't. Okay. Well, just like you, you know what's gonna set them off. Okay, you know if I get overly aggressive, I'm gonna set them off. If he gets injured, I'm gonna set them off. If he doesn't feel safe, that might set him off. Well, you know what? Don't talk to him aggressively. If he gets injured, hey, can I help you? Can I help you with your problem? No? Okay, fine. Walk away. That, that's the one you really can't prevent, you know? But, you know, if, if you know, taking something away is going to stress him out, then don't. You know, don't, don't fuel the anger. Now, quickly, I want to mention, though, that sometimes I saw a video of a kid on YouTube where his mom took away his Game Boy or his Xbox or whatever, and he... <laughs> There's a difference between a flat-out bratty temper tantrum and an Asperger's flip-out. There is. They sometimes may not be easy to distinguish, but there is. Okay, there's a difference between being a brat and having your fight or flight kick in okay please remember that it might be hard to tell the difference sometimes though but you know what that mom did she recorded her kid and put him up on youtube now if you do that with somebody with asperger's that actually might cause more harm than good and if that kid did turn out to have asperger's i apologize if i offend so yeah I'm going to say, I said it before, I'm going to say it again, if anybody has any ideas for logos I can make, because, you know, I, I do draw also, I'll share some of my drawings some other, sometime, please let me know, if you have any suggestions for topics down below, that's great too, please rate, comment, subscribe, subscribe, please subscribe, <clears throat> and yeah, this has been Cole and the Aspie, with, I'm going to call this Pause the Rage Quit. I actually think that's not a bad title. And now my brain is breaking down. Why is my brain breaking? Because I'm running out of things to say. And yet I want to keep talking. So yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you all learned something. I hope you all were entertained. This is probably going to be kind of a long episode. As I look at my, my uh, invisible watch, it's there. It is. Something else I want to say, but I'm forgetting right now. So it must not be that important. Alright, thank you.